that when we talk about the China Open in Changzhou, we're talking about the event that's always been in Changzhou. So first of all, there's a Grand Prix event, and then it was a Super Series event, and then it went down to Grand Prix Gold. Now, of course, it's part of the HSBC BWF World Tour, and it's a Super 1000 event. That's the highest tier of tournament within the World Tour. Now, as you saw, this is just the second meeting between the two players. The only previous meeting was won by this man. Anthony Sinisuka Ginting. That was in the Sudaman Cup in the group stage on the Gold Coast last year. And he won in three games in an hour and two minutes. So he's just 21 years of age, as though he'll turn 22 next month. Born in uh, Chimahi, just west of Bangdung in West Java. Fourth of five children. And he had a sensational first round win because he beat the six time former champion. Lindan in three thrilling games. Look at that. The second game absolutely whitewashed the former champion to five and then the deciding game to 19. So Victor Axelson is a little bit older. He's 24 years of age. And He was born in Orthense, which is where we play the Denmark Open. And as I was saying, he's making his third appearance here. His two previous appearances, he lost in the first round, both when they were Super Series events, 2012 and 2013. But both times, he lost in the first round to the eventual champion. Well, in the first round here, on a match that was played ch on Tuesday, he beat the runner-up from the Japan Open, Petradub. Now, for Pepperadub, that was a tough Ready, old scheduling play. because he could only travel on the Monday here to Changzhou. And it does take most of the days a, a day because it's not the easiest place to get to. Uh, no international airport here in Changzhou. And for him to have to play on the Tuesday, that was tough going. Now, as uh, my friend and colleague has just pointed out, the graphics for the head-to-head -head were wrong. They hadn't been updated. It is, it is, of course, one all because they met last week in the quarter-final stage where Victor Axelsson won in two straight games. So it is, in fact, the third meeting between the two. And if you like your stats, I can tell you that it was 21-17, 21-15. So fairly comfortable Ladies for and gentlemen, Victor Axelson. On my right, but it was 59 I'm minutes eight, in duration for two Still games. And on my left, Victor oh. Axelson, Denmark. Anthony Sinusuka Genting to serve. Labo. Play. Good. So it is the Asian Games bronze medalist, Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, who gets this second round match underway against the former world champion, Victor Axelson. That's gone wide. Right. Come over. One, go. Oh. Yeah. over.
Oh, my goodness, that was a late decision to play that. I think it's actually like a much better shot than we often see when people are a little bit hesitating, mm. hesitative uh, on the um, back court. Still lost it, though. Anthony Ginting Two. really oh. is a very fast mover around the court. He's a very smooth mover around the court. Oh. It's really Come interesting over. match, this one, because uh, Three. Two. Ginting had played really well during the Asian Games, and uh, he was basically the one who disposed of Kenzo Momota. Fantastic victory for Ginsing in on home soil and later on Chen Long and eventually lost in the uh, semi-final to Cho Chen Chen but um, he did a lot of the hard work for Jonathan Christie to emerge the gold medalist at Asian Games and this hall here is very very different from the hall we played in last week in Japan where I mean if you win with 17 and 15 then it normally takes a little less than 51 minutes. 59 minutes, wasn't it? 59. And the thing is, here in this arena, we've seen three game matches three. go in almost oh. the same time. We had just had the mixed doubles with Ahmad and Masia lost to Watanabe and Higashino. I think it was 51 minutes yeah. for three games. So it's very different playing conditions. And I feel that the Ginting's um, speed of movement might um, give him a better chance this week. Last week against Axelson. Oh, three. Axelson there across to the adjoining court and then his eyes drifted to the court on the other side for number one court perhaps not fully focused in yet no, I, I talked to him um, after he'd been um, knocked out of Japan open He's still experiencing some trouble with his ankle, so let's hope he's all right. So, fairly equal starts. Oh. It's gone wide. But that's Five, sending six. a warning to the Dane. Only ever been one Dane Seven. that's reached the men's Five. singles final here in Changzhou. That was the very second time that this tournament existed. And that was Peter Gaida in 2006, lost out to Chen Jin in the final. There's no doubt Axelson will want to rewrite the record books. Seven. 
he says oh. something excellent into uh, Peter Jonas, and as long as I survive the first, it's been the first pressure shot. And he's talking about from uh, Anthony Ginting. Oh, my goodness, that's a good shot. And it's not easy, is it, Steam, for a tall man when the shuttle is pushed flat to the round-the-head position. Oh. Difficult to get below it. Under it. Playing uh, overhead shot. This is a good rally. It's got to be the longest rally of the match so far as well. I think it's the longest rally of the day <laughs> from what I've seen. Well, the defensive shot from Ginting, I think caught the top of the net and it was slightly deflected which meant it was very difficult for Axelson. Yes indeed it did. Yeah. He's got his own uh, physical coach with him on this trip, uh, Victor Axelson. American. Been working with him for some time now and sometimes stays in Denmark for Several periods of time. Is he the one that's been working on the sort of gymnastic no, skills? No, 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 a different that, one. Yeah, that's a, um, a Swedish former gymnastics coach living in Denmark. He's very good at agility practice and so on. But Axelsson realizing that being 194 centimeters high, that gives you some advantages. It also gives you some disadvantages and it's really important to minimize the effect of that so that's a really really good um, approach oh, good reactions uh, it was unfortunate for Ginting because the shuttle bounced off the top of the tape and just sat up nicely for Axelson Did Axelson? Look at that, and gets up so quickly. That's where the agility training has it come is. in. It's not like we haven't seen players do this before, but we don't see that many players on 194 centimeters do it no. so quickly. No. Well, just while the court is being caught quickly mopped, Dean, I want to pick up on that point that he's got his fitness trainer because I thought last week in Tokyo uh, against Kento Momoto in the semi-final, I thought Axelson ran out of steam. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. But he's recognised that's an area he needs to work on. Yeah, and also he's still experiencing some... Um, some... Uh, I don't know if you can see problems or aftermath with his ankle operation yeah so he hasn't been able to practice um, the way he wanted to his surgery yeah. in February yeah. Jadi kamu taruh servisnya yang nggak bisa dia net, panjangin, mana bisa bagus, taruh lagi, jadi udah rancang satu, taruh lagi, jadi jangan set gini, angkat, ya, 
bola setengah belakang dikurangi. Kalau nonet dia, kalau nonet mungkin dia drive lagi ya. Ya tuh, kan gak mungkin dia ngangkat. Ya, ayo. Indonesian men's singles coach here, Hendy Saputro. It was a bit under pressure up until the Asian Games, but of course a uh, gold and a bronze medal for Indonesia was what they came for, and um, they maintained that throughout the season. The results have been fluctuating, but um, also maintained throughout the season that we are on track. It's the Asian Games that is our target, and uh, we believe that we have the right plan, we have the right people around the team, and uh, they certainly have. Yeah. They won the most medal in um, the badminton competition. China had an extra gold, but um, could as well have gone Indonesia's way, because um, Ginting here, he, uh, he played some fantastic badminton. He, in the final against China, he had um, two match points in the second game against Xiu Qi, eventually didn't capitalize was experiencing some uh, stamina problems in the third game, having cramps, and uh, eventually got a third match point. Missed that as well, and then eventually was uh, carried off the court. My goodness. So that was uh, a real dramatic mm. final there, and um, just to emphasize that he played some really, really good badminton. What we've seen here is also good. I, I don't feel he's entirely where he was at the Asian Games and of course um, that's logical that he's not because he's built up so much for that tournament so now we're sort of trying to live on uh, the hard work done up to the Asian Games yeah one point in it yeah uh. He knew immediately it wasn't tight enough. And actually, just emphasizing your point, not about Ginting, but about the man who won the gold medal at the Asian Games, because he lost first round last week. He's lost second round here today to Ang Long. Jonathan Christie, of course, is the man I'm talking about. So, yes, that whole build-up towards the Asian Games. Some players, uh, even if they won and are elated, are struggling now in the aftermath and and you've seen it with Tai Su Ying in yeah. the women's singles she, she won the gold medal and she's lost early in uh, both these two tournaments here um, so it's not only the physical part it's just as much the mental part you're part of a multi-sport event second largest multi-sport event in the world yeah after the Olympics I mean there's only a few Europeans missing in terms of um, Games and you have an Olympic tournament. That's, oh, that's nice. He's so quick to get back from that's the front it. court, Anthony oh. Ginting, and create good opportunities for himself. Yeah, that's just poetry in motion. Can't have taken it before it crossed over the net because the shuffle bounced on the top of the tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have, he would have hit it backwards. <laughs> so now it's Ginting back into the lead. One of three straight points. Make that four straight points. Team match against Kenta Momota as well. 15 8 in uh, the third game. Eventually lost it, but uh, just shows that he was in really, really good form in um, 
those 10 days at the Asian Games were played. Well, this is worrying times for the former world champion because this is six straight points now to Ginting. Mm, a little bit of mind games there. Axelson wanted the shuttle change. Ginting said no. That's very unusual in men's yeah, singles normally. There's enough respect between the two players that they have to just change the shuttle. Good shot. And especially uh, given that the Ginting is playing up against the drift here. Mm. I hope yesterday I got it completely wrong. <laughs> but, um, I'm pretty certain that it's correct that he's playing up against the drift and that would be natural to uh, just want to change the shuttle because you definitely don't want to play with the slow shuttle. You want your opponent to have a chance to play it long. Yeah, clever flick serve. Oh, goodness, that's a wonderful shot to finish the rally, but what on earth was he thinking trying that almost exhibition type shot earlier on? Oh, we didn't see it, it was just before that. And that's where he's so good, is, isn't it? Creating those uh, steep angles. Yeah, that's where his 194 helps him because yes. he's got just a little extra reach. <laughs> if he gets up on toes as well, then uh, there's a couple of centimeters extra. Yes. Also. So he's back level. Yeah, that went fast. Mm. Anthony Ginting down three places in the world ranking this week. From 10 to 13. I guess it must be the Korea Open or something from last year. That, yes, which um, he won. He won against Christie, right? That's right. And that's come off the uh, new world ranking. The result from that has gone wide. Over. Spending uh, forward sometimes, Axelson, like he's having some kind of um, trouble with his back. Certainly seems to be taking every opportunity he can to have a quick towel down. Yeah. thought the round the head shot across court that time, Steen. I know it won him a point early on in the uh, this opening game. This one here. Yeah. I thought that was the wrong choice of shot. Yeah. Too much out of balance, you mean? Yeah. So wasn't really able to um, follow up. So Two-point advantage. Two points away from the opening game.
A soft point, really, in my opinion. And it gives three game point opportunities to Anthony Ginting. Oh, service for four, my goodness me. This is one of the things with the new uh, service rule that I really don't like. It is such an impact in the men's singles. Yeah. Where there were no problem before. Yeah, all the way through the match so far, this opening game hasn't been called. And a game point opportunity. First of the three, he's called a fault. I didn't, I seriously didn't see whether it's. No. I didn't notice it suddenly coming higher. So, on his second game point opportunity, Anthony Ginting takes the opening game 21 18. 22 minutes for that opening game. Come in. Come in. Yeah, he was tired sitting down. Okay. Det er samme spil herover. Op og styre den der. Styr forbanen. Tør at skubbe den langt ind i brystet på ham. Og så lad ham prøve at tage nettet udefra, så du kan komme ind og styre. Men vi må ikke blive passive op på forbanen, for så kommer han ind og får løftet for mange gange. Ikke? Så ud fra siden. Skubbe den langt ind i banen. Ja. Jeg tror, det er simpelthen, vi kan vise de sidste overskud. Jeg, ja. jeg ved godt, det er fucking ubehageligt. Jeg kan ikke få luft her. Ja. Ja. Du må bare til god pause. Ja, ja. lige nøjagtigt. Og så, så hiver vi dommeren ind. Eller, hey. Det er en Well, there was definitely something about lifts. And was there something about pushing back from the net? Yeah, trying to play... Um long drop shot so to speak long uh, uh, it's th it's not really drop shots it's long flat um, shots into almost the white um, service line so that Ginsen would have to uh, gauge the, um, the speed he wanted to put in the, the shuttle if he was going to play the net it's more difficult for Ginsen to play the uh, backcourt with uh, with accuracy from this far side of the court. I have to say, I was quite surprised at the gulps of air that were being taken by Axelson. Has he had a bit of a cold, do you think? He, he talked about something that... Um, he also stretched his back a couple of times. I don't know if there's um, something with his breathing or anything. It's important to what they discussed was it was important to control the front court. Otherwise, he would be made to lift too much uh, because Ginting has played really well at the net so far. Oh, not that time. Had a little look over the shuttle, decided not to go. Oof. Oh, it's a challenge here from Ginting. Well, we couldn't be further away from that back line because we're high up in the stadium, the opposite end from that back line, but I thought that landed in. But I was wrong. Yeah, we have, furthermore, we have, at least I have on the top of the tape exactly where the back line is, so... Um, Backline is really thick from yeah. uh, Actually, my perspective. Right. Yeah, and me too. That's a very good point because I'm looking at the white tape along the top of the net. Is uh, goes along the back line from my viewpoint. Over. 
three, one. Now that's the sort of shot, Steen, that makes me think he's struggling physically. Yeah. Because it was as if he'd run out of patience. We've played, I don't know how many shots, 15 shots in the rally or something. And he was going for a winner when he didn't really look totally on balance. Yeah, it was a uh, all or nothing shot. That shot should not come back. No. And also um, take a look in the rallies of Ginting's technique at the net when he's playing these lob shots, exactly that shot, that shot there as well. Putting the racket and his hand far forward. So it's just a, a, a flick of the uh, fingers, basically. And that makes it much easier to control the power playing with the drift. That's excellent um, technique from Anthony Ginting. Is that what you coaches call a, a soft grip or, or is it? No, it's, it's just, it's just uh, loose. Uh, making sure that your arm doesn't help because it won't help you here it would actually harm you right. so some of uh, the players they use the arm power a little bit too much to get correct length on the lift and i mean on the other side of the court you might have to give it a little bit more push it a little bit more in order to get the correct length but here a little deception short racket movement then you have a better chance of controlling the shot to the back court playing with the drift. And that's all coming from the release and tightening the of finger. the fingers. Yes, because, I mean, the delicate shots, you definitely want to control them with your fingertips. You don't want to control them with your shoulder or other big no. muscles. You want Five. to control Four. them with the smallest of muscles that you possibly yeah. can. Very, very good control from Ginting. But again, Five. Axelsson just turning. Oh. Uh, he, even if he changed his mind, he would have had to play the backhand. Yeah. Didn't really get himself in position. That was good pushes there. From Axelson, really uh, put the pressure on Ginting on the back court. And the response from Hendy Saputro, a big sigh. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps he talked to Ginting about the pushes from Axelson, when which you, we when don't you know. Definitely, when you played into the net once, you want to be ready with the racket so that if you're pushed one more time, you have a chance to intercept. Seven. Not the best of low serves from the Dane. And he's been on, on the pressure ever since. Oh, it was amazing retrieval, as you say, in the early stages of that rally from Axelson, but put himself under pressure immediately with a, a very loose serve. Presumably, Ginting is going on to Korea to try and defend his title. Axelson, yeah. probably not. Axelson is definitely not. No. No, he 
anticipated it. The, the backhand was just played with too much pace for the Dane to deal with. Axelsen is going on to Korea. Wow. And so is Ginting. Of course, Axelsen missed hey. tournaments early on because Seven. of the ankle surgery in February, which yeah. is probably why he had to play all three. Yeah, he had to play, um, was it all level two and three tournaments and four level four tournaments yeah. out of um, seven. So skipped Thailand and Singapore, of course, up to uh, the Worlds. Nine, seven. Oh, this is four straight points now to Ginting. Yeah, was it India Open? that Axelsen skipped because he withdrew from Indonesia, I think it was, early in January. Yes, and then he went off and had his ankle surgery. Yeah, so that's the tournament that you're missing. But, uh, Eight, nine. It should be obvious that if you undergo surgery, you can't play as many tournaments as if you're totally uh, fresh oh. all yeah. year long. Yeah, I just saw there, Steen, uh, the stretching of the back again yeah. from yeah. Axelsen. Oh, that's tremendous. And his speed in moving Coming back over. is um, so amazing. Ten, nine. First time I saw him, I thought he looked like a young Taufik Hidiat. Yeah. Both came or have been brought up in the same club. They have? Yeah. Mm. Over. Ten. Oh. Good. Eight. Nine. Taufik is a little bit taller mm. uh, than uh, Ginting, I guess. And I think Ginting is more explosive in his movement. Yeah, much, much more. And that, that's what uh, causes some troubles for, uh, for Kento Momota. In my opinion, he's, he's the player right now who's closest to uh, nice beating down. Momota. 11, 10, in the ball. Nice yeah, that's a super shot from the tall day. Momota can choose one player to place in the other half of the draw. Then I think he should choose. So long as you get it, it's Yeah, and so long as you stop it, and then see when you just bank it in in the long middle spin. Hey. Yeah. You will have to work on your serve. Stop it. You're too far away from him. Yeah. Yeah. That gives him not. Also, he doesn't even have to touch the net. And that's what he wants to do. Okay. Yeah, they were reasonably satisfied. So no real still, tactics. Still talk. the long um, shots into the court to make it difficult for Ginting to um, play the net. Because I mean, if he is to lift, which is difficult here. Then he has to go through Axelsen's reach, and that should give him some uh, some chances. But again, we saw the stretching. Uh, it seems like there's something in his back that's stuck or something. Good defense. Oh, yeah. The longest rally. Good shot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Axelsen went 100% sharp for that last uh, net shot. And w as we look at this rally again, I can tell you that Axelsen, once again, by the kit box, stretching out his back. Now, I thought in the second or third shot he played in the rally, he hurt himself. Yeah. 
So the deputy referee comes on, Julie Carroll from New Zealand. Just indicates that the medical team should come on. And this is very, very worrying for Danish fans and especially fans of Victor Axelsson. Well, at least he can talk to the doctor Yeah, it's good he speaks Chinese. I don't know how much of uh, the medical terms that he's practiced. Now we really need to see. Here we go. He said, I think Axelson was asking for a cold spray or maybe a heat spray, I suspect cold spray. And uh, the medical team saying they didn't have any. Now I find that quite extraordinary. Yeah. I couldn't really hear what it was that he was asking Can for. Um, maybe it was also just to sort of get ready. There's definitely something stuck in, in his back that makes it yeah. difficult for him to breathe. Um. Yeah. Twelve. It would also explain why he's been going for what I term winners too early on in the round and, and, and missing. Twelve. Oh. This is not going to go the Danes way. 13, 12. This sort of it distracts Ginting. Mm. That um, you can see that his opponent is um, wounded but not undangerous. Yeah. I know, and it's so terribly difficult for yeah. players 13. when you know your opponent is injured. It, it's almost as if you feel you've got to change your game to. But do I play a little bit more safe? Yeah. Because it would be stupid to sort of lose it yourself. Yeah. You feel. But, um, and then if you take your foot off the pressure and stop doing what you've done to be in the lead so far. Yes. And, and there is things, I mean, for instance, um, the idea that they playing long uh, drop shots into the court. I think that, that, that goes, uh, that changes play close drop shot so Ginting will play the net and then you can play a 50-50 shot back at him. Oh, what a, what a smash. So, so in that way Ginting okay, probably over. has to adapt his strategy okay. as well because you want to avoid giving your opponent the chance of playing 50-50 shots. Yeah, yeah. Which basically means that Ginting should play the long drop shots into Axelsson and um, if he's uncertain of anything, just play long shots into the body of the Dane. Then the next shot he can be a little bit more accurate with. Difficult situation altogether, also for Axelson, because you know, if there's something uh, a little bit with his back here, it could be 
just unlucky, but it could also be because the build-up has not been as it should be, uh, because you want to get back to playing tournaments after you undergo surgery. You didn't ask for a medical exemption, because mm. that sort of puts you out for a minimum of, uh, I think it's minimum of three months. That wasn't the case. There was the Thomas Cup, there was the Worlds, there was everything. Yeah. So you might have rushed it a little bit and, and haven't really built the way you should. Yeah. That's where sometimes you've got to sort of um, take the medicine um, in quotation marks and say, okay, I, um, I'm not playing. Like we saw Bowen Morganson uh, do after Japan Open. We yeah. went home and said, we're not playing China, we're not playing Korea. We have to regroup, we have to uh, get better because otherwise we're not competitive. Yeah. But. The, the problem for, oh, that was another very loose serve. The problem for Axelsson is until last month he was world champion, he's current world number one, everybody wants him at the tournament. So, yes. And the rules are such that uh, he has to come anyway to, to do media obligations or he gets a fine. Yeah. But that, that's where, I mean, that's where you, in my opinion, takes the fine and say, hey, I can't go, I can't travel. Yeah. And the fine, in your terminology, is the medicine. So yeah. you, you, yep, you've just you got invest. to say, you invest, you say, okay, well, that's what's got to happen if I'm going to start winning again. And then you raise a case with the uh, players' federation and say, "Here's a uh, rule that we need to look into because uh, we need to make it better. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a good rule, but it's not good enough. We uh, we need to, uh, we need to be able to distinguish um, and to uh, make exemptions." so that you might, instead of coming to that exact tournament, you might be available for a promotion later on or next yeah. year's tournament uh, where it doesn't interfere with your uh, rehabilitation program. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, that's the case anywhere. You make rules and then eventually you became aware that there's uh, some uh, situations where the rules are not really fit. So you amend them and um, that's the way it should be done here as well. In my opinion. Yeah. Looks to me as if he's going through the motions. And that backhand error right. means that it is three match point opportunities for Anthony Ginty. He probably could have been drawn actions as well. I think actually it's very nice that he's uh, playing I the match uh, to the finish line. To the conclusion. I concur because I thought when he asked for the medical timeout and the doctor didn't seem to be able to do anything to help, that's missed. So the match to Anthony Ginting, and not, let's not take anything away from uh, Ginting because he played well, but certainly the world number one well below his best today. Obviously struggling with injury or illness, or perhaps both. But the Ginting played well, and we've seen that he can spell trouble for us. Yeah. So, um, he can spell a trouble for one of the players, as you were telling us earlier on, with all the players he'd beaten or got so close to beating in Jakarta at the Asian Games. So he's through to the quarterfinal, Anthony Ginting. And the world number one, I'm pretty certain, will have to rethink his uh, trip to Seoul next week. Confirmation that Ginting uh, beat the world number one and number one seed 21-18, 21-17 in a match lasting 45 minutes.